Welcome everybody to our next uh, webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski as always. Um, today we have the 17th of January 2018, so half of the first month of the year is already over. <clears throat> and uh, we have the next topic. And our topic today is about trading bitcoins. But also in the name of JVD, first of all, a warm welcome here um, to this kind of uh, webinar. Yeah, as always, you will find uh, already the slides um, ready for download uh, via the go to webinar control panel. And you see already here on my first slide, my contact uh, address, my email address. So if you have any further questions or if you like to get uh, those Excel sheets, which I will show later, just send me an email um, and I will make sure that you get those uh, Excel sheets um, as soon as possible. So it, it might be a little bit difficult for me, but I will manage how to do it. The simple reason is uh, tomorrow I start my holidays, um, but in February I um, will be back for the next uh, upcoming webinars. Anyhow, so I will uh, make sure that you can get uh, those Excel sheets um, if you like. Trading Bitcoins, and what about the statistics is the title of today's webinar. Um, trading Bitcoins, maybe you have heard a lot about Bitcoins in general. Um, and of course, I will make a very brief introduction to Bitcoins overall, um, but not really um, meant to be a real introduction because I'm only interested in trading of Bitcoins and not really uh, of what's behind the scene. Uh, it's interesting, but uh, that should not be the topic of this kind of uh, webinar. And you will find um, a lot of information about that uh, on other places or um, simply in the internet. So we will look to Bitcoins more from a trading perspective. So that's uh, what I intend to do today. But before really starting, um, I have always to show this kind of uh, uh, slide, you know. Um, later we talk about trading strategies um, regarding Bitcoins. And of course, um, the rule is always the same. If you trade, if you trade always on your own and uh, yeah that's mentioned here on that risk disclaimer but i think um, everybody knows about that so let me go back to what are really um, the topics in detail today so after a short introduction to the world of bitcoins and what's a little bit behind the scene, the scene um, I just want to make a comparison, first of all, and uh, I will compare Bitcoins, or better to say uh, BTC USD, because it's um, an exchange rate between Bitcoin and USD. We will have a, look, a close look here today. And since price of Bitcoins is more or less around 13 thousand and that's the same level uh, the DAX um, has right now so I know DAX is uh, a CFD and not Forex but since the two prices are quite close to each other it's um, it's easier to compare those um, bitcoins and uh, or BTC USD uh, against DAX instead of bitcoins to euro us dollar um, it's uh, yeah the prices um, are easier to understand and um, therefore it's easier to compare those two knowing that a couple of years ago <laughs> bitcoins have been uh, just a, a few points uh, four points or maybe 100 points but at least today we are above 10000 and um, therefore that comparison is easier to do um, just get a question here about uh, the webinar and recordings. Yes, of course, uh, the webinar is recorded and uh, you will find um, the recordings later on the JFD YouTube channel as always. And uh, I mentioned that especially here because um, you will see that we apply three well-known and already introduced trading strategies, uh, which you find already by name here, my, my introductional slide. Um, 
the details of those strategies are in um in webinars we have had already so if you want to know a little bit more about that just uh, look for those and you will find uh, the recordings of those webinars and uh, then you will have all the in-depth uh, details of those trading strategies so we will start with comparison between bitcoins and DAX, but um, and we especially have interest in volatility in um, here to see how markets react, especially the Bitcoin market now. And uh, the other thing is that we we want to trade Bitcoins and uh, therefore it's uh, we must have a look to the spreads because those are costs involved in our trading activities. And um, since my last webinar was about brokerage at all, um, and the history of bitcoins uh, is more or less a short lesson about brokerage so it's a little bit of an extension of uh, my last uh, webinar because what has happened uh, you, you all know at jfd it was possible uh, to trade bitcoins uh, last year i'm not sure when it started exactly but uh, maybe around october or september and uh, trading bitcoins has been stopped in december and the simple reason is not that JFD has stopped um, trading bitcoins. No, it has been the liquidity providers. So the real banks behind all of those trades, um, which your trade, your order is always um, processed to that liquidity pool and that um, accumulation of those banks, they decided to stop trading bitcoins. And that was the reason to have um, that stop. And the reason behind, I can only guess, and we will see. And that's really a nice story, or at least it's my interpretation. To be honest, I have no um, detailed knowledge about what has driven the decision. But um, it has to do with brokerage, and it has to do with the market makers. And uh, finally, those banks they're behind the liquidity pool. They are the market for us. So in that sense, they are a market maker. And it's not JFD, by the way. And finally, if we know a little bit more about uh, the statistics of Bitcoins, then we can check, hey, we have um, three well-known strategies, mean reversion, slightly martingale. Oh, there's still a German word on my slide here. Leicht means slightly. Um, and then uh, price action, finally. Uh, all strategies, I uh, think B and C have been uh, introduced only a couple of weeks ago. Mean reversion is a little bit older. But we can use with the knowledge of the statistics of bitcoins we can apply what we learned about other trading strategies and we can apply those rules with different parameters and um yeah and then we can trade bitcoins profitable and uh, yeah that we will see finally okay but as I mentioned, a short introduction to Bitcoin. So, um, of course, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and um, more or less, uh, and there are several cryptocurrencies, uh, there's more or less an inflation of those uh, cryptocurrencies um, like Ethereum, Ripple, and you name it. Um, and sometimes all are called Bitcoins, which is definitely wrong. There's only one Bitcoin, and that's this, this was a short symbol BTC, and that's the one we look today. So um, there's a very well written article on Wikipedia. So I'm um, I put the, the it here, and uh, you can have a um, you can learn much more about the Bitcoins um, and um, how they are created, uh, how they are managed, how they are transferred and so on. So it's a nice article, but uh, let me do the short summary here. So the main, let's call it features of Bitcoins. Bitcoins is a real means of payment. So it's real money. It's virtual because um, it's only uh, exists only in the computer language, so to say. We don't have coins. We have no notes um, written with bitcoins, but it's a payment methodology. So you can really pay invoices uh, in bitcoins, 
and uh, up to now there are more than 100,000 uh, shops and uh, stores where you can buy something for bitcoins so it's real money and regarding this all the dis uh, ongoing dis discussion about bitcoins and um, yeah, is there, is there a big hype and um, is there a big bubble or something like that? I don't care. Currently, it's a payment. It's a means of payment. It's money and we can trade it. And that's what's important for me. The volume of money in circulation, and not all is already circulating, but the volume of money is restricted. Um, and that's to 21 millions, which is nice to know because you, you might compare uh, that money restriction with what our um, federal banks are doing. They print money if they want, and they did it in the last couple of years, uh, yeah, uh, enormously. But that cannot happen with bitcoins because the total volume is limited to 21 millions. So that's good that it is restricted. It's a little bit more like um, in in older times when we have had the situation that the circulating money has been covered by gold. But uh, that's not, uh, I think it's a couple of decades ago um, that connection um, to gold um, yeah, it's not any more valid. And uh, since then, we have that just printing money is possible as well. I like the comparison because the total amount of gold is limited as well, at least as long as we stay on Earth and don't uh, go to the, the outside universe here. Um, then the total amount of gold is restricted as well and it's difficult it costs money to get gold to mine gold and that's by the way the reason why um later uh, so still you can create bitcoins but only those which are then finally circulating out of those 21 millions and that's the reason why uh, that process is called mining um, that's done by complicated calculations and um, the higher the price of bitcoins the more complicated it will be it's um, yeah just uh, something within computers anyhow you can do it you can even do it by your own um, but um, then you are part of the overall bitcoin community as well What's, what's else important? Transactions are done decentralized and pseudo-anonymous. <laughs> what does it mean? Transactions are not stored like you, you go to your web page on, on, uh, of your, your bank account and then you transfer money from A to B and um, then your, your bank will do the rest. No, in this case, it's decentralized. It's stored around the world at uh, several thousands of computers. And it's called pseudo-anonymous <clears throat> simply because um, one knows the Bitcoin account behind, but one does not know the name behind that account. So in, so in principle, everything is open um, and everybody could see any transaction from um, from A to B to C to, to D, but you only know those valid account numbers um, and so you don't know the persons behind. All tra transactions are stored and they are decentralized by a so-called blockchain. And to, to be honest, that methodology of blockchain is a real hype behind it opens uh, several other possibilities which uh, might happen in future. It's like to have a contract between two persons. Normally, yeah, you exchange documents, to, you sign them, and still you all believe that those documents are not changed after signing. <clears throat> Here, it's much more easy because one would distribute the document decentralized and you cannot change it afterwards. Uh, it's simply impossible. And therefore that blockchain 
um, development or um, invention. There is a real hype behind, and we will see lots of other applications of that as well. I mentioned already that mining process, <clears throat> and um, that's how to create new circulating Bitcoins out of those 21 million. Um, and that's done by a complicated uh, computer calculation. What's important for us as a trader? We trade currency uh, forex pairs. And in this case, we, take, we trade pairs like BTC USD or BTC Euro. And yeah, that's what we want to trade. And I hope that um, within a couple of weeks or months that we can trade those at J JFD once again. But first, now let's have a quick look to the Bitcoin um, price uh, right now. So there's a nice internet uh, address, which is called bitstamp.net. Um, and I open that here um, because it shows you a little bit more what happens trading Bitcoins. Um, and what you will see here is, yeah, it's like real stock. And um, now, oh, <laughs> I have not been aware that the Bitcoins are already below 10,000 right now. But what we have here is simply a chart, like charts we, we know from any other trading platform. But we have a little bit more, because in this case, we have the order book as well. And um, all the three other things here around are representing that order book. And um, on the left here, you see every committed transaction. So that's what's running uh, down here. On the right, you see all the prices and volumes where people would offer or buy. And that's uh, what you see here in the red and green. And finally, what you see uh, here in the middle is um, yeah something like the order flow or the order book uh, in a more graphical way of view. So it's simply the same information, uh, which is in the right hand uh, table, but now uh, in a graph. And what you can do with those kind of pictures is you can try to interpret the order book in order to get a feeling of what might happen next. What's always here of interest are big orders, well, at least bigger orders, because they might be something like a resistance. So because they will not go through immediately because they would not match between people who buy and people who offer. And um, those you can see in the, that graph here, if you, whenever you have those stepwise um, behavior, um, you can see, for example, the 11,000, so a round number. Um, that is a good example. So there are l much more orders in place than at other positions. But um, because I looked to that web page um, a couple of times now, the order book is getting thinner and thinner. So it's getting a little bit dangerous right now. Uh, so maybe the volatility will increase once again because with some bigger orders, you can really move the market here. Order books are normally not what we do in our own trading activities. We don't have access to order books. But in this case, you have a, a real insight into the order books of uh, Bitcoins on that uh, web page. Uh, by the way, that web page is really um, a computer killer. So I close it now because it uh, takes a lot of resources of the computer. But that was a price. Right now, around 10,000. Okay, but now let's go a little bit more, more mathematically here. So what we want to know is we want to know more about the volatility in Bitcoins because volatility is one of one um, extremely important aspect um, when, when it comes to trading. We will start here um, only on D1 base. Uh, and by the way, then we include the weekends because uh, Bitcoin prices are available um, around the week. I restrict myself to D1, um, although I would, have had, I would have data for smaller time frames as well. But you will later see 
from a trading perspective, going down the road to smaller time frames is not a good idea for Bitcoins. Um, because um, I give you already the, the, the reason here, the relation between movement and uh, spreads are not um, good enough going down the road, going to smaller time frames. So let's restrict ourselves to D1 because then we can learn already everything we want to know. And in order to get a feeling of volatility, um, I use two methodologies. One, I look for a certain D1 candle and uh, compare to the high minus the low. So that was the overall range of the day, of that day. Um, but since Bitcoin is, uh, yeah, a couple of uh, months ago, it has been at 100 points. Now we are at 10,000. Uh, therefore, it's better to do this uh, high, uh, low comparison. Not absolutely. Um, it's better to do it in percent. And the same we do for the, the close to close comparison. So the close from one day to the close uh, to the next day. Um, and that will give us a very good feeling about the overall volatility. And especially if you do it in comparison to the um, DAX value, because um, the DAX is, let's say, more familiar for uh, everybody than Bitcoins or something like that. I mentioned here my data sources. Um, um, at, at those web pages, you can have access and can download uh, data. Uh, let me only show you one in detail here, and that's uh, the last one, that uh, kegel.com. Uh, that's not a real um, trading um, platform or a data source. It's a data source for nearly everything. Um, and there, it's uh, even possible um, that you can have uh, data on a one-minute base. And uh, starting at uh, 1st of January 2012, um, you need to be registered here, but it um, doesn't cost anything. And uh, you don't get boring emails afterwards, uh, only from time to time, but it's okay. Uh, and then you can download uh, here even Bitcoin prices uh, on M1 base. There are not very um, many um, data sources for Bitcoins on smaller time frames than D1, but here's a good one. Um, so if you are interested in those, no problem, you can download them here. So we, we do our analysis on D1 and let's really start uh, doing that. So what I did is I put those data um, and I started, uh, you will see here on my left uh, hand side, I started with um, uh, April 2013, uh, the reason is the Bitcoin has been around 100 at that point in time. And I don't want to go further down. So we start in 2013. So we have about um, four years of um, history right now. Yeah, and then I did what I mentioned, um, the comparison high minus low in percent. And uh, later I applied an SMA 30 on that. That would be a month uh, of time um, because weekends are trading time. And I did the same for close to close. But now first let's go back to the price, the price we know already. Um, of course, <laughs> for Bitcoins, there's only one uh, y-axis possible and then it's uh, logarithmic uh, axis. Um, and even <laughs> scale uh, it logarithmic, uh, you see we have an increase in slope here, <laughs> um, which means uh, it's um, more steep than even an exponential growth, which is something really crazy. Um, but since now we are back at 10,000, uh, so we have a good correction right now. So, but anyhow, since 2015, there has been a huge increase in price of Bitcoin and it was even more than exponential because in the, in the lower scale, it's uh, not a straight line. Um, so it's a convex um, um, curve. And uh, so, yeah, that's the reason. But the price itself is not what really counts for us because we want to look to the volatility of the market. And now what you see here in that graph is that volatility, or better to say, um, the difference between high minus low and that it's that in percentage values. And honestly, 
that are huge numbers. I will later, in a minute, I'll show you the comparison to the ducks and then look to the scale. We have had up to nearly 50% so um, changes within one day, within a single day. So it's a difference between high minus low. And for the last couple of months, the overall volatility has been increasing and you see typical values are 10 or maybe up to 20 percent um, difference between high and low which is crazy think about 20 percent um, in values of ducks the ducks at uh, 13,000 that 20 percent would mean the ducks price would go up and down during one day of 2600 points well would you trade the ducks if we would have those kind of movements Hmm, that's a good question. Um, to get that um, a little bit noisy behavior out, I use that SMA 30, uh, and then you see a little bit more clear picture here of uh, that um, volatility. And you see, um, since 2016, there was a constant increase in volatility, but the volatility has been already higher than today uh, in 2013 um, but nevertheless there was during the last couple of months uh, a steady increase of volatility so it's a huge volatility within the market so what 10 percent is standard right now 10 percent in the dax would mean 1300 points well that would be moves and to summarize those numbers, um, I calculated the overall average um, for for that volatility or that comparison high minus low, and that's around 5%. And if you do the same with the close, the absolute values of one close to the next day's close, uh, then we are around 3%. Just to get a better feeling, let's look for the same period of time but now for the ducks, which is more familiar maybe to everybody. So same period, um, April 2013 up to uh, more or less now, that means yesterday or the day before. Uh, in this case, it's once again a linear scale, no logarithmic scale here for the ducks. And you see the well-known um, trend for the last uh, couple of months here. But the trend is not what we are interested in right now. We want to look to the volatility. So same type of analysis, but now for the DAX. And you see a totally different scale. So absolutely maximum here has been a 6% value, which is not bad, but more or less, most of the time we are in the range um, or below 2%. So it's a totally different picture here. And let's look for the um, smoothed one here, the SMA 30 on that. Then you can see that um, a couple of days ago, um, we have been at a really extremely low volatility within the DAX. It's not long ago here. Uh, we now back at around 1%, which is, um, yeah, it's not high. Uh, we have had much higher times here, um, about double the, those values, so still, the behavior of the ducks is quite calm, but those are typically numbers. So same numbers, overall comparison, uh, total average of high minus low is here a little bit higher than 1% and the close to close is a little bit below 0.8. Let's look in one picture to those numbers. Um, then we can go already for an intermediate conclusion here between comparison between ducks and uh, bitcoins. So the volatility of bitcoins is four times higher than DAX, and the close to close is uh, difference is about a factor of three. What does it mean? If you trade bitcoins, you need other rules for stop loss setting. Why? Yeah, because of the volatility. So if you would go with tight stop loss distances uh, in percent or absolute values, you would ruin yourself definitely. Uh, because within a day, there's always what I call noise. That is noise means prices wiggling around, a little bit uh, going up, a little bit going down. In this case, 
the, those amplitudes are that huge, and you can stake, scale everything with that factor of four if you compare DAX and uh, Bitcoins, that you need definitely um, um, bigger distance uh, distances for your stop loss setting. Same is for time frames. If you go for two small time frames, and typically if you go down the road smaller time frames, then you would apply smaller stop loss distances, then you are kicked out of the tr those trades. Um, Good. I, I'm just a, a question uh, mentioned here in the chat. Uh, um, is it possible to trade bitcoins with uh, JFD in the near future? As I mentioned already, it has been um, possible last year. Then it has been stopped not by JFD, by the liquidity providers. But I'm confident that um, they will pick up it once again. And um, in, in a few minutes, you will see what has happened and why they have stopped. Um, at least my interpretation, no knowledge about that, but my interpretation. And what has now changed, um, they can, nowadays, they could hatch themselves uh, at uh, the Chicago um, Stock Exchange. And uh, because you can trade even futures on Bitcoins now. And since this is now possible, I assume, once again, my interpretation uh, that they will start trading Bitcoins once again. And then, of course, JFT will uh, pick up uh, as well. So we should avoid, um, we should avoid uh, two small time frames. Um, but uh, we will see a little bit more about that uh, when we go for the next topic. The next topic is here. If we trade Bitcoins, we have to know what about the spreads. I repeat myself during my webinars, I know, but spreads are extremely important. Everybody should know if you open a trade, you are instantly, instantly in the minus, in the millisecond of opening the trade. And the reason is the spread. Sometimes we forget uh, um, that, that uh, fact. Trading Bitcoins, it was more than visible. Um, just an example, because it's already here on the slide. Um, and then I will pick up my statistics uh, starting in, in November 2017, when it has been possible to trade Bitcoins at uh, JFD. What was not unusual have been 100 points spread at a price level of 13,000. And that was normal. And you will see later even higher numbers. What does it mean? Just compare to the DAX, then you know how important the spread is. The DAX is at 13,000 and we have a spread of one point. So a typical spread of Bitcoins have been 100 times. More or less, that means if you open a trade with 0.01 lot, that that trade is at minus one euro when you open the trade, if the spread is around 100 points, at least more or less. Would you trade the DAX with 100 points spread intraday with small stop loss distances? Wow. So you see how important it is to look to the uh, to the spread. And I come already here to that conclusion. This, it depends really on the final spread we will see when the trading is once again possible because the spread has a potential to ruin every any trading strategy. So we, we, we have to keep an eye on that. But let's look here once again to what uh, the statistics is telling us. Um, when it has been possible to trade um, a JFT, then I always monitor uh, the spread values by my own in order to see what happens around the spread because the spread is that important for my trading activities. And um, I have a little bit more history than the 1st of uh, November. I think it started in September already, but um, for a long time it has been boring. Spread was around 20 points or something like that. And then you see starting with more or less December, a 
steady and huge increase in spread. And now let's look to that fact from the perspective of, we of what we learned um, during last webinar about brokerage. And you, you learned that I don't like market maker that well. Therefore, I like JFD because they are pure, have a pure agency model for trading, meaning all the trades are processed to that liquidity pool. But that liquidity pool is once again something like a market maker. But the good is um, there are 20 banks in one pool and uh, they compete against each other. So only the one with the best offer for your trade gets your trade. Uh, and that's good that um, they, they compete uh, around your trade. And now let's look back what happened during December. Trading was possible. And my assumption is that most people did the exactly right. And that was trading long. Bitcoin USD or Bitcoin Euro. So a lot of traders opened long trades, long trades, long trades. Finally, those trades ended up at those big uh, banks within the liquidity pool. And price went up, went up, went up. So it has been a minus for them, a huge minus. And at that point in time, they could not by themselves go to Chicago and go and open um, at the future um, stock exchange, uh, future contracts was long. So your, your profit was their loss. And what they did was they increased spread. That's at least my interpretation. And you see what happens in the last stage here, nearly 1,000 points spread compared to the DAX. 1,000 points spread. So you open a trade at 10,000 and instantly um, you are 1,000 points in the minus. Wow, what a story. I think nobody would trade uh, anymore the DAX uh, if we would have a, a spread of 1,000. So we need back to, uh, spreads here around uh, values like 20, 30, 40 and you will see later when it comes now to the trading strategies uh, what i did uh, uh, is to apply a simple rule i put spread to 0.5 percent of the price uh, simply because um, i have no idea whether maybe the the, the bitcoins uh, is going back to 1000 uh, or maybe it's going up to 100000 and i don't care but i'm sure that the spread will be not constant and therefore i apply that new rule having spreads percentage wise when we go for the trading strategies within all our uh, excel sheets but that's a nice story here that huge increase in spread uh, within yeah, within days. And I think it was a protection from that liquidity pool, from those banks behind uh, to protect themselves um, against additional losses uh, and to make it not that attractive uh, to trade long um, on, on Bitcoins. But I don't know. Um, that's uh, simply my story. So we know about spreads. That's good. Um, and it's always important to have a view on spreads when it comes back to opening trades for bitcoins um, so we have to check uh, when it's once again possible to trade bitcoins we have to check the spread because that has to be part of our trading activities and part of our calculations what we do now in the next couple of minutes is we simply check. Uh, it will be a little bit fast, maybe I know. Uh, for three trading strategies, trading strategies which have been introduced already earlier, and we simply take our prices, our historical data of bitcoins, starting from April 2013, and put those uh, historical data in our well-known Excel sheets with those strategies. Yeah, we change it a few parameters and then look whether we can trade them profitable or not. And the three strategies are mean reversion. What does it mean? Just in, in brief. Mean re reversion means you, you take a chart, you put an EMA into the prices, and then you have a distance between your actual price and that EMA. 
And if that distance, that deviation from the actual price to that EMA is huge enough, and huge will mean there's a certain threshold, which is a parameter in within that strategy, then in the normal mean reversion strategy, if that deviation is, for example, to the north, so the actual price is much higher than the EMA and now exceeding a certain threshold, then we open a short trade. The idea is that the price goes always back to the mean and the mean in our case is simply the EMA. We will see that originally that strategy does not work for Bitcoins. And if you look a little bit more close to, to the charts of Bitcoins, then you know, uh, no, that's not the way Bitcoins behave. Bitcoins, they, they tend to, to exaggerate. They tend to move even further. So if Bitcoins breaks in one direction, then it will go in that direction a little bit longer. That means we simply have to reverse our mean reversion strategy in a way that um, when it comes to a huge deviation from the mean, from the DMA, and that deviation, for example, is to the north, then we open a long trade and not a short trade. Than, uh, which has been the original idea. So that's the mean reversion. Then we have something which is slightly ma martingale, and once again, we have a German word here. Um, and slightly means that we open a trade and we will not just double our position. And it simply depends on the risk reward ratio we use in our strategy. And you learned about that, I think it was um, four weeks ago, about that kind of strategy. So we open a trade and uh, if that trade is um, a loser trade, then we open once again a trade, but in the opposite direction. And it depends on our risk reward ratio of those trades, uh, how much increase we apply in for, for our risk. And we learned that the higher our risk reward ratio is, um, that the lower we have to multiply our risk. Once again, all the details you find in the recordings of those webinars. And finally, we have a price action strategy, which is already from the name uh, a good hint that it should work for Bitcoins. And the logic here is we measure the volatility by measuring the ATR. And for a given open of a new candle, we, we, um, we put two orders in the market, one by stop to the north in a certain distance from the open of that candle and a sell stop to the, means to the south in a certain same distance um, from the open of a new candle. And those uh, pending orders, those stop orders, um, yeah, they, they, the idea behind is if we have a real action, so a price action in one direction, then it will go on. And that's a brilliant idea for trading bitcoins and you will see the equities uh, in a minute so let's go through those um, strategies here and let's start with uh, bitcoin usd for mean reversion and you see i don't go to the details right now but uh, always um, so what's new for those uh, which who are who have seen the same um, Excel sheets earlier, the, the, the main difference here is that now the spread is in percent. Um, so that's calculated in percent. All equities are always in the risk unit R. Um, so you can multiply with any euro or dollar amount. Um, and you see an equity which goes south. We have a few parameters we, we can we can turn, uh, like the EMA period, that multiplier, and so on. I don't care about those details right now, but you see that equity goes to the south. And honestly, I tried with other parameters, um, smaller, higher, uh, but I have not been successful. So as I mentioned already, mean reversion in a way, if we have a huge deviation to the north, then opening short trade is not a good idea for Bitcoins. But doing the exactly reverse is a good idea. And that now looks this way. So now we get an equity 
which is quite well. And we can change those parameters, we can optimize them further, and uh, we get very good equity lines. Uh, for example, this one here has a total sum of um, 200, nearly 240 hours profit um, with a maximum drawdown of 24 hours. That means we have 10 times of our maximum drawdown as being our profit, which is really a brilliant strategy and that within um, four years. We can change the parameters a little bit further and try to optimize those strategies. I have done this, um, you know, that normally I do uh, all my work here in a uh, called LibreOffice and not in Excel, but that kind of optimization I use from time to time uh, that um, solver within um, Excel. And uh, then you we get an equity uh, finally, which uh, looks like this. It's even a little bit better, um, sum up, uh, sum of, R's profit is 260 uh, at 18 um, maximum drawdown. Not that bad, especially during the last couple of uh, months. So for about one year, we have a huge increase in profits for that kind of strategy. So it's worth to go for that. Next strategy. Next strategy was this slightly martingale approach. Um, as I mentioned, we uh, the higher the risk reward ratio, and that is this CR4, CRV uh, is in German, uh, in English, risk reward ratio. In German, it's Chance Risiko Verhältnis, therefore the other letters. But with a risk reward ratio of eight, our uh, lot increase, um, our lot increase is uh, totally different. Uh, it's we don't have to double uh, when we have had a loser trade. Um, we only have to multiply our original risk with a factor one point one two five. So it's not uh, that huge. And you see already here that that right hand picture um, that is a this is a multiplier um, for. Um, the lot size, and uh, you see we we go up to three times the value of our original risk, which is not that bad. And then we get a really very nice strategy for um, bitcoins once again. Yeah, and the and the best one I show directly here in uh, in Excel uh, is the price action strategy. Um, yeah, that's nearly a straight line in 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 equity. Uh, so we have about uh, 200 hours profit with a uh, maximum drawdown of 10. Uh, so that's a factor of 20 within three years, um, and it's an easy strategy. It would mean at the beginning of a candle, we place those two orders, which um, is named here range max, range min. It's just placing those two orders uh, in in a certain distance um, being a multiplier on that ATR22 and that's all and then the trade is running um, with a certain risk value, a certain stop loss value, a certain risk reward ratio and uh, we are done. So the, the strategy behind, um, I think it was a webinar uh, close to Christmas um, and there you find the details uh, of um, the, the real strategy behind. And that's called price action, because if the action goes in one direction, then the assumption is it goes further. And that's exactly what Bitcoin is doing. Um, because of that high volatility, the volatility is not totally random. If a move comes, then the moves goes on a little bit longer in one direction before it starts um, turning once again. But that's then enough already for a profitable trade. And that's uh, exactly that kind of price action strategy. Three strategies and all are based on other logics. We have uh, derived those strategies for, for DAX, for Euro, US dollar, and we can apply the same logics, but with other values of parameters, of course, we need other 
stop loss distances and since in this case for example stop loss distance is based on ATR we have already that huge volatility incorporated in the strategy and therefore that kind of strategy works um, here that good that's nice and let's go for a summary here uh, with three different uh, kind of strategies and um, yeah in a nutshell bitcoins are really highly volatile that we have to keep in mind always when we trade bitcoins especially when you trade discretionary um, approaches for for bitcoins you know tight stop losses will be a disaster i can promise you i can guarantee, even guarantee that this will be a disaster for any trading especially having in mind that the spreads involved are higher than for any other um, cfd or, or um, currency pair uh, any forex pair so we know that we have to incorporate those costs in our trading activities we have to incorporate the spread values uh, if we set stop losses and keep in mind for example 100 points spread and even if it goes down to 20 points compared to the DAX value then you get a feeling of what it means for 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 trading um, I s cannot think about a DAX trade uh, intraday with uh, 100 points um, spread so let let's see when it comes back to uh, the possibility of trading bitcoins at jfd the final spreads and once those spreads are not done by jfd they come from the liquidity pool as well uh, so we have uh, to monitor those spreads and then we can uh, decide whether to go or not to go for any trading activities why can we trade bitcoins profitable with known strategies the reason is simple that the moves are high enough that it balances the costs and that finally we can turn that even to profitable trades so if we are on the right side then the move is that big that we can get our profits if we don't have those high moves and still uh, huge moves and still would have the same kind of costs then it would ruin our trading with any strategy and that's also the reason why we should avoid at least as long as the spreads are on those levels we should avoid smaller time frames mathematically you can boil that down to um, if you translate the the daily volatility down to an hourly volatility that would be around one um, percent and you remember one percent compared to a spread of 0.5 percent mm, that cannot end up in profitable trades so it's always a balance between spreads and volatility which opens um, the door for any profitable trade and therefore we have um, we need a close view on on spreads as always and especially if it comes to um, to bitcoins if you have any further questions and um, don't hesitate just send me an email to s.friedrichowski i know a very complicated last name at jfdbrokers.com and um, but but be aware that um, the next uh, three weeks i'm on holiday i'm in cambodia uh, so maybe i will not answer that fast as normally um, but it's my yearly holiday so uh, i think you uh, can apologize for that uh, but uh, holiday is a good thing as well and in february we start our next uh, kind of webinars we go for candlestick formations um, and what was the other topic um, candlestick formation and another one today i wrote them down uh, the two titles uh, but i simply forgot the second one but um be curious it will be interesting definitely hopefully and i hope you enjoyed uh, this webinar as well and you will find the recording soon on the jft youtube channel okay have a good time and uh, thanks uh, for um, participating in that webinar bye bye